Hi, I'm Bill, and if this is the first time on my channel, welcome. This video is uh, an opportunity for me to share uh, some things I learned the other night about my ASI 294mm monochrome camera and getting it integrated in with my uh, HEQ5 uh, Pro mount. I really went out there the other night just filled with excitement. I was definitely uh, showing my uh, beginner stripes and my rookiness. Uh, uh, there was many things that I didn't take into consideration that I could have taken into consideration before I attempted to bring the, uh, the camera uh, with my Xenostar 61 Mod 2 uh, telescope outside and, and mount it. Um, the first thing um, that I ran into is I just, being a rookie, I didn't really take into consideration that when I removed my Canon 6D and then installed the filter wheel and the uh, camera, that the weight relationship now was going to be different. So um, when I went out there, and I went to check if I was balanced in this in this orientation right away it just dropped down like that and I should have taken that into consideration what I needed to do actually with my Xenostar 61 is I needed to move uh, the mounting ring forward on my dovetail I don't know if you can see in this view here uh, but Typically, I had the this mounting ring here towards the rear of my dovetail, so I needed to move it into position uh, forward in this dovetail. So there was plenty of room on the dovetail. I just did not have the mounting ring positioned in the correct uh, place on the um, on the dovetail. So I got that taken care of, and then I was able to um, get a better balance. Um, the other thing is, um, I really did not take the time to rough focus the telescope with the camera to see if I had the right uh, back focus. So what my understanding is, what I'm trying to achieve with the uh, Xenostar 61, and I have the William Optics Z61 adjustable field flattener, is I need to have this camera uh, sensor 67.9 millimeters from the last optical piece in the imaging train and right now that is that optic that's in the um, field flattener so this is my understanding and um, I uh, tried to use an ex an, uh, a uh, an additional extension tube and then I tried to reduce my field flattener from where I normally have it at about 12.9 uh, down to 3.9 so I was having a difficult time uh, getting focus so kind of ended the night early because clouds rolled in so um, the next day I worked with the scope uh, right here at my desk uh, to see what I can do and I changed things out. I, I took this extension tube out and I again set my field flattener uh, its adjustment to uh, roughly uh, 13 now and you know so again it's about counting uh, in millimeters the width of the spacers that you have in your imaging train uh, in an attempt to try to get to 67 uh, 0.9 as I understand a drill. So the next uh, clear night I get I'll go outside. I did rough in focus. I was shooting across the street. Um, I was able to achieve focus but that's nowhere you know long enough distance. I don't have a good spot outside where I can shoot at something that's miles away. Uh, that would probably help me uh, achieve rough focus a little bit better. But I used the same uh, approach for setting rough focus as I did when I had my DSLR, DSLR on here the first time I tried to use this Xenostar 61. So let's see if that's uh, 
going to work for me. So again, I had to change the position of the mounting ring on my dovetail to obtain the correct balance in the, um, in the declination axis. Um, I think I've got 67.9 now um, on my image train for back focus. Uh, we'll see. The other issue I had was I was using astrophotography tool and when I fired up astrophotography tool it kept choosing the ZWO uh, ASI 120mm uh, mini camera over the ASI 294mm and um, so again another rookie mistake I think anytime you're working with a new piece of equipment you want to make sure all your drivers have been updated and I had not updated uh, the uh, the ASCOM driver and then there was uh, an update to the uh, ZWO drivers so I worked through all that I made sure everything was on the proper release level for driver and for software and then the issue with uh, the one the conflict between the 120 mm and the ASI 294 mm uh, was resolved in that process though I thought there might have been something wrong with uh, astrophotography tool which now I believe not because it was a driver issue again a rookie mistake on my part but in the process I uh, set my gear up with Nina I know several viewers have recommended that I use Nina and so now um, I'll be testing out Nina the next opportunity I get to work outside on a clear night uh, one thing I did like about Nina since this dedicated astro cam uh, has a cooling feature um, able to there's a display there where I'm able to monitor uh, the temperature um, I think astrophotography tool has a similar feature um, but anyway it, it's clearly available in Nina and so I'm going to be spending some time using Nina along with astrophotography tool uh, over the next few weeks as I get some uh, some nights uh, to work out there so anyway in my excitement as a rookie I just rushed out there and I didn't think through um, a process of checking all these various things that I need to consider um, and anyway I'm a little bit smarter now and definitely um, I'm able to get the right balance we'll find out if I got the right back focus uh, I have my driver issues resolved uh, so I should be good there and then we'll just see what happens the next time I go out but you know I'm very excited I, I would like to get some images uh, using this camera and uh, I also ordered a set of LRGB uh, filters they should be here on the 12th I think today is the 9th uh, yeah it's the 9th so it'll be here in a few days the next few days is going to be very cloudy so I'm not going to be able to do much outside the other thing I want to mention I now have uh, a blog it's blog.astrovagabond.com uh, someone wanted to know what my gear list is so I created that blog there's not much up there right now uh, I do have my gear list along with uh, what I paid uh, per item so that might be of some interest to you if you're trying to think what a budget might look like to go with a dedicated uh, astrocam and uh, I'll start to do some posts up there on the blog it'll give me an opportunity to go into a little bit more detail uh, in support of some of the videos I'll be doing in the future uh, so anyway uh, if you like this kind of content please give it a thumbs up as always I welcome new subscribers and I really appreciate people when they take the time to comment I'm getting again great tips that are helping me be a better beginner and get me up that learning curve uh, more quickly and if you're reading those comments too uh, I'm sure you can pull some knowledge out of them as well and for you more experienced people that are taking the time to uh, help me out uh, thank you for dropping into the channel and uh, and taking time to comment it's greatly appreciated okay that's about it till next time